Uh, so for this video, uh, I want to talk about uh, controlling your scraps to make something really pretty. So uh, I, I've got some colors that I'm going to be working with, but uh, I'm taking it out of my scrap pile. I'll show you in a minute. I've got Primo Black, Primo Ultramarine Blue, or Navy Blue, sorry, it's a dark blue, uh, Primo Purple, Pearl, uh, Yellow Glitter, uh, or yellow gold glitter and white gold glitter and uh, so those will be some of the colors I'll be using and um, the purpose of this is I had made a really nice bracelet uh, which is sold so I, I can't show it to you but um, I had been blending some scraps and uh, the pasta machine gave me this really pretty little sheet and uh, rather than continue to blend it I made it into a, a bracelet so um, it sold really, really fast and I wanted to make one for myself. So I took some uh, browns and, and bronzes and blacks and uh, yellow gold glitter and white gold glitter and um, put them together, just scraps, and um, simulated the look that I got by accident, um, but this time a little bit more controlled. So I thought I'd show you how to do that um, because it, it's pretty useful technique to have. Uh, sometimes you just you, you get something that looks really nice and it needs to be bumped up a little bit so you can um, do that yourself or um, you know maybe you just want to blend some some scraps together. So the colors I'm going to work with today are uh, <coughs> the ones that I showed you and that's what I use to make this bracelet. And I guess I'm calling it a galaxy blend because it's kind of, you know, out of this world space sort of thing. It, it had the colors from different um, astronomical photos there for ga um, galaxies. But then I got a little crazy and did some swirls and stuff, but I really liked it. So I need to make a pendant to match it. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to start off with some scrap black. Um my white hairs off of there and uh, it's not pure color I've probably got a little bit of glitter in here from previous projects and I've got a piece of blue and I've got some purple and I got a bit of pearl with some purple in it uh, let's see what else is in my scrap pile I've got some yellow gold glitter some pearl and now well, I had some white gold glitter but I'll find it in a minute or I'll just cut some some new stuff for white gold glitter so when you cut this if you've ever used these glitter clays from Primo um, if you take a big chunk of it and you put it in your pasta machine, it's going to crumble into a million pieces. So you're way better off to cut really, really thin slices. Uh, you could take your roller to it, roll it out a little bit. Let's get these other scraps out of the way. Um, you know, just to kind of mush it together. And then when you put that through your pasta machine, it's not going to crumble into a million pieces. So you have to treat it kind of gently. So I got my really, really, really tiny pasta machine beside me because uh, the one that I usually use has a motor and it's uh, on another side of my room. So this is actually the pasta machine I started with and it's only about four inches um, working space with it. But um, it was enough that when I started with clay, I was hooked with it. So there's a little bit of white gold glitter and if I need more I'll just I'll mix up some more. So because let's say if I'm going to do this as a bracelet I'm going to start with my scrap sort of in a long shape. So I don't want a big sheet of it that won't fit for a bracelet. I want a skinny sheet that can be stretched out for a bracelet. So start with some black and then I'm just going to start tearing up some of these scrap colors and put them where wherever because that's going to get blended. So we'll get some blue in there. Uh, 
And I won't take all of my scraps in case I decide that I need to add more of any particular one color. So there's a bit of blue. I know I want some purple in there. There's always an element of uh, surprise doing this. It's it's somewhat controlled, but there's, you know, there, it's never truly controlled. But that's kind of the beauty of it. It's nice to let your machine give you some surprises sometimes. Okay, there's some, and we'll put a little of this pearl and purple in. And maybe just a touch of the white gold and the yellow gold. Um, that particular color, the white gold and the yellow gold, I reserve that for the end of the blend because um, you'll, you'll see when I make this blend, it, um, it will spread out too far and it'll just give you a, a glittery effect. A little bit of that is fine, but if you want, uh, you know, if you want like, you know, more bang for your buck kind of thing, uh, you're going to add that at the end. And uh, that's probably why I call it controlled, because you're going to decide when to put these things. So anyways, uh, yeah, why not put a little bit of the pearl too. That's good. That's my scraps. So let's start blending that. I'm doing that on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. And I have it set up on my left side, so you probably won't see. So that's the first pass. Okay, not too bad. So we're going to fold that because we need to start blending it. Again, let's see, you have a look at it, decide what side looks better to you, and fold it inside, and blend again. <laughs> I miss my machine with my motor, because my arm is falling out of this one. That's because it's just a temporary setup. Okay, that's starting to look like something. So I'm going to work it a little bit thinner, so I'll move it to the second thickest setting. And just run it through again. Okay, that's starting to give me something to work with. Okay, so now it's time to start making some, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, what can I say, uh, conscious decisions. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut some of this white gold glitter. And I just want thin pieces because I'm going to roll it. And see, even at, at this stage, it hasn't been conditioned enough to be... Uh, um, to hold together really well, so you just kind of have to play with it a bit until it sticks together really well. So I want this really thin, and I'm going to start making some spirals because I'm trying to to get something that matches my... Uh, my bracelet and I probably I won't do this whole piece because it's going to be too big so let's just cut a section like that and then I can play with those scraps later on okay so we'll do another one Ideally, let's put this on a piece of paper so that I can rotate it without having to rotate the, uh, the clay. So 
So once you get a few of these on, then you want to take something to smooth it out with. So a small roller or knitting, knitting needle or anything like that. And s smooth it out a bit. Don't let the pasta machine do it for you because it's going to, you know, distort it or decide where it wants to go. And this way you get to decide where you want it to go. So you can see how thick that is already. Um, if I want it more delicate, I've got to roll skinnier snakes. yellow gold. I'm going to thin that down even more. Right now it's probably on a three on my pasta machine. I'm going to thin it down quite a bit more because I just want a little bit of that in there also. I think I want a little stripe of yellow gold too. Maybe I need to round out an edge so that I don't have a hard edge. I love these glitter clays, but I, I really found that you had to uh, just use them on the, your top layer if you want them to, to really shine, to really look good. Okay, we'll put a few more there. so that when it spreads out it still looks like a spiral. You could do any design or no design, it doesn't matter. On um, the, uh, the brown bracelet I just had nice bands of, of glitter and I really like that look. But I'm trying to match the other bracelet so... Put it where you want it and smooth it out. Okay, so we'll run this through the past machine. So right now it's on a second set, uh, thickest setting. I'm going to drop it to the third. Okay, let's have a look at 
that. So I've got some cutters. Uh, these are these are from Rhonda J. Polymer Clay and Resin Supplies. They're uh, 3D printed cutters. And let's see. Let's have a look and decide what's going to look good under here. I need more gold. So that's kind of what I mean about controlling it. Des decide what you think is going to work best for what you're doing. And uh, you don't even really have to put that through the pasta machine again. You can just smooth it out with, with uh, this is one of those uh, stainless steel straws. It actually works pretty good as a, as a bit of a roller. So I'll just get a little bit more. Because a girl can't have too much glitter, right? Okay, let's have a look again. Okay, so once you've made a decision, these you've really got to stand up and and uh, press down hard on them. Edges are pretty wide. And it's fairly thin, but I'm going to bake it like this anyways because I'll put a backing on it later. Okay, let's get a knife here. I'm going to spend a little time making sure that everything is smoothed out. Uh, I'm going to go get something to bake it on and I'll be right back. Okay. A little metal disc. This used to be like a big metal button. Um, so that'll give me just a slight curve. And that's going to make the underside shiny, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to be putting a backing on it. But uh, I'll need to make a bale anyway, so when, I, uh, when this is baked, I'll be back and I'll do the bale and that'll be the end of it. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and uh, this is baked and it's cooled. So just take it off the form. And while I was at it, I made a a pair of earrings to go with it. So first thing I'm going to do is just kind of scrape this hard edge because uh, I'd rather deal with a softer edge than a hard edge. So that'll just take a second. Uh, let's get the other clay out of the way. So I'm just running my blade. Sometimes I use um, <coughs> little paint scrapers. They work really good too, but this rigid blade works okay too. So 
So we're just going to just take off that hard edge. And if I wasn't adding a layer of clay, I would do this for sure, because uh, that makes it a lot more comfortable on the skin to wear. Okay, so just get rid of that. So what I've done is uh, I've taken the other side of the scrap that I, I previously saved, and I ran it through the pasta machine with um, this uh, foam. This is uh, you buy it in the kitchen sec section for, uh, what do they call that, antibacterial, I guess. Uh, but anyways, any this type of foam works really well, or something to texture it, and you can texture it by hand with sandpaper or whatever. Uh, a textured, slightly pebbled textured finish sits against the skin better um, because uh, with the plastic you're going to sweat and uh, then sometimes your pendant sort of gets stuck in place. It's very uncomfortable and this will give just a little bit of air movement in, in there. It's microscopic but it's, it's there. So uh, I'm going to use this sheet and a little bit of translucent liquid clay. I'll just spread a tiny bit of it on the back of the pendant. And you don't need much. Just enough to give it a little bit of tack. Okay, so let's get that piece of paper here again. Put the texture side to the outside. And I could have used black on here, but um, I just put out of black. <laughs> So uh, I thought, well, why not use the scrap from here? So I'll just put a piece on there and uh, make sure it's in place really well. Use the same foam to sort of texture it. And then I'll just trim it with my knife. So first I'll take some of the excess off. easier with a flexible blade but okay and then I'm going to trim it here so I'm going to come in on a slight angle because I, I want it beveled to the inside and that way the uh, it won't show on the outside and I'm just running that blade along the uh, baked clay And then I'll smooth it out a little bit with my hands Oops. and use the, uh, the sponge to sort of texture and play, press it in place. You want to make sure when you do this that you haven't gotten an air bubble anywhere and it seems to be fine. It's a little hard edge there. I'm just going to scrape it off. I could touch that up with sandpaper later, but just as easy to take care of it now. Okay, so now we make a bale for it. So again, I've got more of that scrap. This time I rolled it quite thin. It's uh, the third thickest setting on my uh, pasta machine. And I kind of liked this area that had um, kind of that purpley color because it's in the pendant so I want to want to get that so I've got these football shaped cutters I've got one that's plastic and then one that's metal that's a little bit smaller so I'm going to use both of these and I guess I could use a piece of plastic on here and figure out about where I want that I'd like to have about the same amount of that pale color on either side showing so okay so that's a start and then for the the other part to go inside uh, I want some black just for the contrast 
Might as well use a piece of plastic again and bevel it. And I'm going to put both these pieces on together. In here. So much for beveling it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so now we'll get that centered on here. My black here is souffle. I'm hoping that's going to stick okay because souffle sometimes doesn't stick as well. And then I took some of that white gold glitter and I rolled it really thin. That's on the fifth setting of my pasta machine and I'm going to cut some strips out of that. Where'd I put my rigid blade? Hang on. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how things disappear that fast. <laughs> so here we go. Anyways, so I'm just going to cut some strips. And I want them really skinny. But about the same width if I can get it. Okay, so now I'm just going to run these alongside of that black. Just kind of fancy up this bale a little bit. Now I'll get another piece of patty paper and just kind of burnish that in a little bit. I can do that with my hands or these odor deodorizer type things and I just want to make sure everything's well bonded because if it's not when I fold this in half it's going to uh, it's going to start pop pulling apart. So neat, but that'll be in the back, and I'll probably put my stamp over it anyways. Okay, so now I'm going to start folding it. That's not too bad. So I'm going to get a little poly paste. I could use TLS again, but I'll use the poly paste because it's a little stronger. And I'll put a bit on the back. A little bit on the front. That's poly paste. Then, well, let's see, since I got a grid, let's try to find out where the center of this is. Mm. 
right about this line right here. Working on a grid is really, really useful. Sometimes I forget to use it though. So let's see. Put that there and over top. I want that a little deeper. It only has to be big enough. Like you have to decide what type of cord you want for it. Um, for mine, that's probably going to be um, a t shirt cord. Okay, let's make sure that's well centered. And then for baking purposes, um, I got already a piece of rolled up uh, paper here from making end caps. That'll work. So I'll just stick that in there. Make sure that things don't collapse. And I'm going to get myself a little crystal to put there. So hang on. Okay. I've got one here. These are the uh, Hot Fix flat back uh, Swarovski crystals. So I'll position that where I want it and just press it in and they hold really well when the when it's heated the glue is going to set it pretty much permanently in place so that's not too bad now let's see if I can pick that up without getting into trouble okay so now when I go to bake it too I'm going to put a little piece of paper underneath to sort of keep it uh, keep the curve on it So I'll put it back on, on the uh, support that I baked it on, just because I don't want to lose that curve. And that'll go back in the oven. Then uh, I'll uh, come back and show you when it's all done. I'm going to finish them with uh, UV resin. I could sand and buff it. Um, but every time I've sanded and buffed the white gold glitter, or the, the yellow gold glitter. I've lost a lot of the glitter. You know, it's sitting on the surface. So you're going to sand some of it off. So um, I really found that the, the um, UV resin um, helped me preserve all that glitter. So that's what this one is done with the UV resin. So uh, I'll um, show a picture of it all done and uh, see you uh, later. Um, Bye. Thanks for watching. Okay, I've completed this piece. I thought I'd show it to you all done. Uh, so it's been um, varnished with this UV resin. Um, I really love this stuff. It's applied with a brush. Not this brush, but uh, I've been keeping my brush uh, under wraps with foil. It seems to work instead of cleaning it out, but you can clean it with uh, uh, acetone or um, that type of thing. So I made a pair of earrings to go with it, and and that's it. It's, it's all set. Um, anyways, hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time. Bye.